Hello everyone, hope all you are fine in this pandemic situation of COVID-19. After long days of holiday, of lockdown, we came together through this virtual classroom. Myself, Ram Dhangar, your new assistant teacher, welcome you all in new academic year of Happy Buses, the Concept School, Wasim. In last academic year, that means in 7th standard, you had been taught ancient and medieval history of India. And during this academic season, we are going to study modern history of India with the help of Enhanced Footprints. Enhanced Footprint is the book of SST for grade 8. So before beginning the topic, let's talk about this book. Generally, uh, footprints are the impressions or images left behind by a person walking or running. But in historical point of view, it means that important memories and incident that happened or left behind in our past. So that memories and incidents in the past which we recollect and learn in present in order to direct our future is called history. Uh, along with history, this book covers geography and social political life of the country as well. Total there are three subjects consist in this book having total 36 lessons. Uh, in history there are total 10 lessons and in geography there are 9 lessons and in civics total there are 7 lessons. So let's begin with the chapter number 1. The name of the first chapter in history is when, where and how which will certainly enhance your interest dealing with the subject. If you overlook your past, uh, you will <coughs> see some stages that is childhood, youth, adulthood, etc. And according to that stages, you will see some changes that took place simultaneously. And those different changes in chronological order we study in history. Some students might feel that history as a boring subject for them. But certainly I will say for them that people who forget their history can't make history or victory in their whole lifespan. According to Napoleon Bonaparte, he was a great emperor. Uh, so according to him, history is the version of the past events that people have decided to agree upon. Through these lessons, we are going to study history of modern India, that means changes or incidents that took place after Indian independence. Before touching the incidents, let's see a recap of earlier historical incidents in India. So, begin with the topic. Uh, India is a land of ancient civilization located in the continent of Asia. Yes, we live in Asia. It is the seventh largest nation in the world with a total area of 3,280,263 square kilometer surrounded by Bhutan, Nepal, and Bangladesh to the northeast, China to the north, Pakistan to the northwest, and Sri Lanka to the southeast coast. In this social, economic, and cultural configurations are the products of long process of regional expansion. Indian history begins with the birth of the Indus Valley civilization and the coming of Aryans. When the Aryan comes, our history begins with that time. These two phases are usually described as of the pre-Vedic and Vedic age. Hindu, uh, Hinduism arose in the Vedic period. You know, remember, the 5th century saw the unification of India under Ashoka the Great, who had converted to Buddhism and it is in his reign that Buddhism spread in many parts of Asia. In the 8th century, Islam came to India for the first time and by the 11th century had firmly established itself in India as a political force. It resulted in the formation of Delhi Sultanate, which was finally succeeded by the Mughal Empire, under which India once again achieved a large measure of political unity. Uh, it was in the 17th century that Europeans came to India. I must ask you that uh, which was the first uh, European traveler to come to India. So it was Vasco da Gama. So this coincided with the disintegration of the Mughal Empire, paving the way for regional states 
in the contest for supremacy the english emerged victors the rebellion of 1857 which sought to restore indian supremacy was crushed and with the subsequent crowning of victoria as the empress of india the incorporation of india into the empire was complete it was followed by india struggle for independence which we caught in the year 1947 on 15th august here is a brief timeline about the history of india so i must say that the indus valley civilization vedic civilization buddhist era the invasion of alexander the gupta dynasty uh, harshavardhana etc uh, you have been already taught about uh, this timeline and different eras in previous class so now we will uh, review the medieval indian history in short the medieval history of india is renowned for uh, deriving a lot of its character from islamic kingdom extending across almost three generations M medieval india included a number of kingdom and dynasties the chalukyas is for example the chalukyas the pallavas the pandas the rashtrakutas and the cholas Mughalia Sultanate or Mughal Empire was a long lasting empire in this country. Emperor Akbar was also known as a Akbar the Great or Jalaluddin Muhammad Akbar was the third emperor of the Mughal Empire or Mughal Sultanate after Babur and Humayun. He was the son of Nasiruddin Humayun and succeeded him as the emperor in the year 1556 when he was just 3 13 years old now after that uh, now after babar shah jahan shah jahan also known as the shahabuddin muhammad shah jahan was a mughal emperor who ruled in the indian subcontinent from 1628 to 1658 he was the fifth mughal ruler in india but after babar humayun akbar and jahangir shah jahan succeeded the throne after revolting against the फादर जहांगीर नाउ आफ्टर दैट इट्स कम दैट दिल्ली चे ही तख्त राखी तो महाराष्ट्र माजा ऑफकोर्स आई एम टॉकिंग अबाउट छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज छत्रपति शिवाजी महाराज वॉज द फाउंडर ऑफ द मराठा एम्पायर इन वेस्टर्न पार्ट ऑफ इंडिया दैट मीन्स इन अव महाराष्ट्र ही इज कंसिडर्स टू बी वन ऑफ द ग्रेटेस्ट वॉरियर्स ऑफ हिस्स टाइम एंड इवन टूडे स्टोरीज ऑफ हिज एक्सप्लोइ्स आर नरेटेड एज अ पार्ट ऑफ द फोल क्लोर King Shivaji used the gorilla tactics which is called ganimikawa he used to that tactics to capture a part of dominant mughal empire and defeat the mighty enemy after chatrapati shivaji maharaj there were peshwai in west india and along with the peshwai some regional powers also there but they couldn't store their empire against the mighty british east india company so it was the short timeline of early historical events so uh, now uh, let us see about how the british rural established their kingdom in different parts of india by colonizing it by defeating some regional rulers and how the modern history of india came into being uh, during the late uh, 16th and the 17th centuries the european trading companies in india competed with each other By the last quarter of the 18th century the English had outdone all the rulers and established themselves as the dominant power in India the british administered india for a period of the period of about 2 centuries and brought a revolutionary changes in the social political and eco economic life of the country however the zenith of colonization was achieved when the british arrived in the early 16th century as the traders capitalizing on the disintegration that existed in india after the mughal rule the british actively used the strategy the strategy of divide and rule to rule over india for over two centuries while the british had come in earlier they only achieved political power in 1757 after the battle of par plassey they took a keen interest in the resources that india had to offer and have been looked back at as the plunders of india's spell of resources as they took cotton spices silk 
and T amongst numerous other resources. While they did uh, lay out a massive chunk of India's infrastructure by also bringing the Indian steam engines, it is seldom looked back as an equal relationship. The British Raj was divisive and made to fight Indians against one another on the basis of religion and mistreated labors also. The Indians were essentially slaves of the British rule and were working very hard without any returns on their work. This naturally led to multiple mutinies and this was resulted to prominent freedom fighters came to the forefront. Different ideologies of, the th of thoughts believed that there were different ways of gaining freedom. However, they all had common goal, freedom. That means our Swaraj. The British Queen had asserted that the aim of the British was to help India's progress. However, multiple problems arose without the consultation of the Indian leaders. One important instance of this was when the when in the First World War, Britain launched an attack on Germany on behalf of India, even though India did not wish for that to happen, and millions of Indian soldiers were at the forefront of the British Indian Army during both the World War, further fueling the Indian resistance. Over a million Indian soldiers were killed in the both the World Wars. So, students, it was the short recap of our Indian ancient medieval and modern history. In this book, we will learn history of India from arrival to departure of British rule. Remaining portion we will continue in next video. Till then, take care of yourself, stay home, stay safe. Thank you for watching this.